Good morning, good day, and Paul. Today is Thursday, September 28th, and here's the heads up briefing for today. Today's production consisted of 85 issues. We had a total of 69 issues in APAC and 16 issues in EMEA. And in East Asia Pacific, we covered 36 issues. In North Asia, nine issues. In South, East, uh, in South Asia, 24 issues, and uh, along with the major developments in the EMEA region. Thank you, go ahead. Starting off with East Asia Pacific in New Caledonia, Glencore, which is a commodity trading and mining company, announced yesterday that they will halt funding for the Konyambo nickel mine by the end of February 2024. Glencore added that the mine has incurred significant losses due to the current market conditions. Okay, thank you. In Indonesia, Hundreds of activists conducted demonstrations outside the West Nusa Tenggara Provincial Government Building and the gov governor's office in Mataram yesterday. They are demanding that the provisional government take action to address various agrarian issues, particularly uh, land conflicts. Over 100 police officers were deployed to maintain and monitor the situation. Okay, thanks. Basil, could you just tell the team to monitor this closely because this project is a national strategic project that has also been funded by Chinese money. So we're writing an assessment on that and this should go into that. Yes, sure, Day. we'll do that. Thanks. Uh, in Thailand, the Thai Meteorological Department warned of heavy rainfall until tomorrow. Uh, heavy rainfall is expected in the Lat Krabang and Bangkan areas in Bangkok today. And uh, district officials warned of potential flash floods in Pew uh, Kradyung districts in Leo province over the coming days as well. Okay, thank you. Moving over to North Asia, uh, China's anti-espionage bill has put multinational companies, state-owned companies, and other organizations on alert. Since the release of the latest anti-espionage law, China's state-owned companies or uh, those affiliated with the government have started distancing themselves from other multinational companies that offer legal investment and consultancy services. Thank you. Basil, could you tell the team to look more into this and to prepare a briefing document for us so we can work on an assessment on this? Yes, sure, Day. Thanks. Moving over to South Asia, in Pakistan, law enforcement agencies successfully thwarted a car bomb attack in Quetta, Balochistan yesterday. Uh, they discovered and seized an explosive-laden car parked near a police station in the eastern bypass area. Great. The insurgency in Balochistan is not letting up at this point. And uh, with more groups joining the Tariki Taliban Pakistan, which is expanding into Balochistan, uh, this is not good for the future security environment of the resource-rich province. Thanks. In India, tensions and insecurity are rising in the northeastern states of the country. Due to the growing concerns about the stability of the region, the central government extended the Armed Forces uh, Special Powers Act to parts of Arunakal Pradesh and Nagaland for six months on September 26th. It also declared Manipur as a disturbed area under the same act yesterday. So this act allows security forces to search, detain, arrest, and open fire at individuals to maintain public order. Uh, tell the team to keep a close eye on this because uh, the arterial highways in the northeast are quite interconnected and if there's a blockade or protest along one then it disrupts travel across the whole northeast thanks okay they will monitor that closely uh, moving over to the EMEA region concerning the tensions between Armenia and Azerbaijan a former head of the breakaway ethnic Armenian government in Nagorno-Karabakh which is the billionaire Ruben Vardanyan was arrested by Azerbaijani security forces he was uh, arrested when trying to flee from Karabakh to Armenia following the mass exodus of Armenians. Thanks. In Germany, government authorities have announced that they will introduce temporary checks on the borders with two countries, Poland and the Czech Republic. It's a bit to, to curb the entry of illegal migrants. Just see if this uh, will result in any travel checkpoints or disruptions along the borders and we'll have to inform clients accordingly. Yes, sure, I'll check that as well. 
In Italy, baggage handlers and public transport workers will go on a national strike for 24 hours starting tomorrow. Thanks. Concerning Russia and Ukraine, for, uh, Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova has accused the UK and the US of being involved in the attack on Russia's Black Sea fleet headquarters in Sevastopol city on September 22nd. Uh, it's no surprise. The UK and the West have been giving Ukraine intelligence on this. So um, I would believe the spokeswoman in this case. Finally, in yeah, so would I. I think we're heading down a path of going to, if we're not already there, it's looking very grim. The West, led ably by America, despite the name NATO in Europe, uh, hell bent on World War Three. Um, obviously, we're writing a very detailed analysis on the reasons behind my comments there, and we'll conduct a formal briefing seven to ten days on this and i think that's a must listen for clients we'll distribute it but also conduct it live online i think would i think it's very very important that companies start strategizing what if because i think everyone's blindly optimistic and blindly trusting western spokesmen and western media when we cut through the bias and the propaganda uh, i think they're listening to the wrong ledger if they're looking for truth honesty and to understand mapping out the future Sorry to cut you off there, Basil. No worries, Paul. No. Yeah, we'll prep on the briefing for that also, Paul, for the comments. Thanks. Go ahead, Basil. Yes, lastly, in Africa, Mozambique, uh, the chief executive officer of Total Energies said that uh, the, co the company will aim to restart work on the Mozambique LNG project this year. Okay, follow this closely because there still is a lot of security threats in Cabo Delgado where the project is. Yes, exactly. And there's a lot of there's also a lot of managerial question marks over Taltal's managerial and commercial capability and integrity. We see that time and time again. We see them thrust into new markets, new projects, and they fly, excuse my vernacular, pretty French boys out. And they read a book or they read an email or they read a report and then they're an expert on wherever they're going. And they show super hyped up colonial attitudes to everywhere they go. And given the French trends in all things Africa at the moment, that's another risk continuum, managerial incapacity and, and a lack of empathy or sincerity for the local communities other than the quickest way to get a quick buck. So monitor this really, really closely because I see it as another trigger point, okay? Sure, Paul. We'll keep a close eye on that. Anything else from you or Rude? No, thanks. I just want you to stick around. I just want you to stick around, both of you, if you can. I want to go into the first issue you raised today in more detail without it being bogging down clients and the audios, okay? Yes, sure, Paul. That's the heads-up briefing for today. Thank you.